Coming up on Houston Life, it's election day. We're getting you prepared with resources and freebies for voters. Plus, emotions are running high. If you're suffering from election stress, it's a thing. We're going to share tips to help you relieve all of that anxiety. And are you at home with voting fatigue? Derek is showing you what you can do while waiting for the results. All of that and more on Houston Life. Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Well, good afternoon. It is the day that we have been waiting for. Finally, Election Day. I'm Courtney Savala. It's November 3rd. Hey, Derek. Hi, Courtney. It is so great to see you. I'm loving the glasses. I'm glad you had this contact lens issue because it's working <laughs> for you. I am oh. feeling good. Trying to represent, yes. and like so many people out there, I am so glad it is finally election day. How are you feeling? You know, I, I'm good. I'm glad that this day is here. We've been talking about it forever. Um, I'm excited to watch the coverage tonight. I love that vote things are now part of our accessories and, and our wardrobe. And um, have you checked in with your mom? Because I know this is a big day for your mom, too. She's been really busy for as long as I can remember. She's been a poll worker. You guys know she lives in Utah. And this morning she was up at 4 a.m. bright and early to go to her post. Look there her. she is, all <laughs> suited up in her PPE. She's got her mask, her shield, her little vest, and uh, of course her KPRC socks hiding under those jeans. So Bobby I Sharon love Short. It. We love Thanks She's for repping it product. out. That is so awesome. Yeah, she is decked out, and that's her little hug to us from across the miles. That is so fantastic. So I'm going to hug her right back, too. And I'm hugging you. I miss you, friend. We're going to get a full update on Brando and COVID and everything else. But now we've got to take care of some house cleaning, right, before we get to the fun stuff. This is actually fun, too. We're going to check in with Lauren and Joe. And, Lauren, you are helping voters get the right information today. You're at the phone bank. What's going on, girl? Absolutely, guys. Today we are here at NRG, and as you can see, we've been checking in all day. This is such a great opportunity for you to call in and get your questions answered. We've teamed up with the League of Women Voters of Houston, and we've been here all day, and they'll remain here until 7 o'clock tonight, until the polls close, to get all of your information. We've got tons more questions answered coming your way a little bit later on the show, so don't move if you want all this info. Hi, ladies! <laughs> They're excited to answer your phone calls. <laughs> Only Lauren Kelly can do the wave, you know, in an election phone polling. I love it. Okay, we're going to check back in with you in just a second. And Joe, I think this is such a great idea because a lot of parents might be struggling on what to do with their kids on election day. What do you have for us? Yeah, Courtney, you're absolutely right. So a lot of parents are probably having a hard time trying to find a babysitter for those kiddos while they go out to cast or vote at the polls. So the little gym of Houston Bel Air is helping them out. That's where we're at right now. They've kicked off their election day camp since earlier this at 1 o'clock, and you can actually see a lot of the kiddos already here. They're tumbling. They're fumbling. They're getting the workout in here at the gym and burning off a lot of energy, but they're having a really good time. So when we come back here, we're going to show you all the activities that the kiddos are participating in. We're going to try and check out some of the activities that I can participate in, too. I'm not sure <laughs> how big you have to be or tall, but we're going to try and get on one of these balancing beams, Courtney. Well, that sounds <laughs> great. Uh, both of these ideas, we can't wait to check back in with you. Lauren and Joe, we'll see you in just a little bit. Uh, but right now, Derek, we got to talk about the Election Day mood. What's your mood? Because according to a recent poll, listen to this, this was a Yahoo uh, Life article, and nearly 70% of American adults say the 2020 presidential election is a significant source of stress in their life. I, 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 don't, I find that very accurate, right? And this is up from 52% in 2016. Um, they also gave readers an option of choosing either anxious, optimistic, pessimistic, or indifferent. What do you think? Very interesting. Well, I think the same uh, expert is saying that if you feel excited, that's okay. Yeah. If you feel stressed, that's totally okay and normal too. If you feel scared, totally okay and normal. And I think the takeaway for me after reading this is that it is okay, people. We are going to get through it. And you know, I gotta say, I am feeling so good today because day after day, if you've been watching the news, which many of us have, we've seen these record numbers of voter turnout. Right here in Texas, more people early voted than actually voted 
voted in total in 2016. That is a huge, huge number. And so that alone, that is democracy at work. And I know we've talked about this on Houston Life, all these lawsuits trying to throw out votes and voter suppression. It is a real thing. It has been happening. But at the end of the day, I feel so good just simply seeing that so many people have exercised their most basic civic right and duty to get to the polls and vote. Absolutely. I'm with you on that one because this is what's so exciting about it is whether or not this this presidential election or any of the election, that's not the only thing that we're voting on here, uh, goes in your favor, right? We have to remember that so many people are getting out and voting. And that's what people should be excited about. And they should be excited about it every year, not just the presidential elections, but we know the numbers do go lower on non-presidential years. Um, but I'm excited for it. You know, my kids are talking about it. They want to know. And I think that that is so great because that's where we have to be today. We have to be able to have the conversation. You got to go out and vote. So many people are saying, this is my first time, first time voting, or so many memories are going into this. But I love that we're seeing record high numbers everywhere. And it is great to see those first time voters, whether they're a young person yeah. or even close friends of ours. Uh, one of our dear friends just took his aging parents for their first time to vote. They went through the registration process a few months ago and they just sort of felt like during decades of living here in Houston, they thought, you know what, I'm not going to vote. Why? For a lot of people, it hasn't been a priority. And they right. said this year they wanted to register. They wanted to vote. I got to tell you, if you are feeling stressed out, though, Courtney. Yes. It's always okay to bring in backup. So what do we have? Uh, I'm just going to say. Are we eating or drinking? What are we doing? <laughs> just adding a little bit of ice here. You are the party planner. I figure that whether tonight is a short night or a long night. Is that my alarm clock? I'm sorry, is my alarm going off? Ooh, oh, I know. That is the it's same sound as your alarm clock. I'm just going to pour myself a little uh, liquid stress relief here. So whether we know the results of the election tonight or in a few weeks or in a few months, I'm going to be right here with a little lemon drop martini, okay? Oh. You are fabulous. Drink up, honey. Okay, here's another thing. Forget the absentee ballot this year. Apparently, the new thing to do is hop on a PJ <laughs> private jet to make it to your polling place on time. According to Business Insider, private aviation firms are reporting a new trend in bookings this week. Flyers are returning to primary residences mm, to submit their ballots. What do you wow. think about that? Well, unfortunately, um, I live so close to the Toyota Center where I voted that I didn't actually need to take a private jet. I know, don't feel too bad for me. It is, I mean, in all seriousness, though, some people have gotten on jets to, to vote in their in their homeland, right? So we've seen people going to states like <laughs> Pennsylvania and Florida and Ohio right. uh, states that are being watched closely. You know, Texas is being watched closely as well. If right. you've got a private jet to go vote, I say more power to you. I just think that if you have a private jet and you also wear mom jeans like a lot of guys do, um, what's the point of having a private jet if you can't afford a stylist? <laughs> I love that. Point well made, Derek. I, love I mean, you. you know that there are local Houstonians in that boat. So I do I'm, know. I'm just I do know. There. And let me tell you, my private jet, well, I don't have one. No, I can't even get a seat on one or, a, a, you know, it's not happening. I, we drove ourselves to the <laughs> low. You drove through it. You were the drive through one. Um, okay, listen, y'all, and if you're voting today, keep that I voted sticker. Because many places around town, we've been talking about this, offering all kinds of voting perks. Plus, it's a cool accessory. Um, to see a complete list of those freebies, also discounts and deals, all you need to do is head over to click2houston.com. Also, Krispy Kremes, Michael's Cookie Jar, Burger King, all kinds of places. Local mm -hmm. places are doing um, different margaritas. So all kinds of really, really great stuff to take advantage of. We love hearing that. We love hearing that. And while you're stopping by these local businesses and getting your freebie, be sure to show them a little bit of love during this very trying yes, tip well. year that is 2020. Absolutely. Okay, so um, what are you doing? How are you spending Election Day? I know I was talking to some moms earlier today because, you know, a lot of schools uh, are out today because the schools are actually polling locations. So kids are out. So everybody's thinking, you know, I know what you're doing because you're starting early, but everybody's saying, like, I'm going to be glued to the TV here at Channel 2. Um, I've got my wine. I've got my snacks. It's almost like a charcuterie board. I mean, this is like an event. 
like it's no other, right? Yeah, and I think people are also, in addition to um, the food and the drink maybe, a lot of people are like doing little election games. Yeah. I used to do this thing with my friends years ago and we would get together and we would watch uh, the returns come in. I know that, that is clearly not happening I've done this it. year in yeah. this COVID household. We are staying home alone. Um, but it is kind of fun to, to just go through state by state and, and keep your own tally, sort of like when you're watching the Emmys or the Oscars. And again, like make a night of it. I, I think that we all need to just take a breath and try to enjoy. So if you come up with a game or something fun, we definitely want to hear from you guys. How are you spending the day? If you're celebrating, great. Let us know how. Send us pictures and video, uh, and maybe you'll inspire some other people to join in on the fun. I know, and that's what uh, evolves into a party virtually, right? That leads us also to our viewer question. We want to know, how are y'all spending election day? Did you vote by mail, drive through in person? Did you vote today? Did you vote early? Share your I voted pictures with us, and we might share them on the show as well. Derek and I, I know you and I both voted early. You actually voted uh, before I did. I think I voted on the 22nd. I think that was the day that I went. But it was easy in and out and uh, it's such a breeze. I, I'm a fan of voting on election day. There's something really special about it. But now I just feel like empowered because I'm already done. I know it feels good to have voted early uh, so you can avoid the lines, but based on the wait times that we're seeing today, right. if you have not voted, folks, get out and vote and talk about the most perfect weather. I swear, Houston probably has some of the best weather in the country on this election day. Get out. If you have to wait in line for a while, enjoy the fresh air, wave to your neighbors, and uh, and go and do it. There is absolutely nothing holding you back. And once, once you're done, as Courtney, as you just said, it's going to feel so good to be done. Absolutely. Um, can I get a go back on something, though? Sure. Uh, the giant shaker? Where did you get that? You've been hiding that from me. Lovely. It's from Houston life. So when we moved from the mall, true story, Courtney, we had all this stuff that was left property? over in our green room. <laughs> Nobody wanted this. And That's so a shame. I took it. And the, and the amazing thing is it makes one whole drink. <laughs> I mean, and a good the one. capacity, it's a little small. This is the smallest one we have. But if, if you're just a single person, this will do the job. I'm telling I, you. I love it. It's almost, I feel like I'm watching the Home Shopping Network. This is fabulous. Okay, listen, we're going to wrap up with you for right now, though, because we're going to get a check back in uh, with you in a little bit. Drink up. We want to know how Brandon's doing. So we're going to check in with you on Zoom in just a little bit. Cheers, Okay, my sounds good. And still to come on Houston Life, stress relief tips to help you cope with that election anxiety. Also, we're going to check back in with Joe Sam, who is showing us what some kids are doing on election day. They're tumbling and having fun. Houston Life will be back in just two minutes. Welcome back. You know, kids are out having fun at the little gym of Houston Bel Air while their parents cast their vote. Joe Sam is there now checking out all the activities, and this is such a great idea for Joe for parents. Yeah, Courtney, you're absolutely right. So I've been trying to channel my inner flexibility, but I don't know how well that's working out. We're going to show you those kids in just a bit. They're getting ready to do another activity. But first, we want to bring in my friend Alex here. He is the gym trainer and manager here. We're going to talk to him a little bit more about what's all the activities that they have going on. There's a lot of stuff the kids are getting involved in. There certainly is. Actually, while we're here at the gym, a lot of the things that we practice and play are actually some games that they're already familiar with. They've already tried it in class, they've already tried it at school, or maybe at the playground, except now they have a whole bunch of other equipment to go ahead and use. Absolutely. It's all at their disposal. So much equipment here, making sure that we focus in on safety so you guys have everything sanitized and ready to go Absolutely. for the kids to come in and kicked off at around what time? So today, actually, most of our camps for the rest of the month are going to be starting off at 1.15. We figure right after a quick lunch, maybe they've already gotten their nap in, 1.15 to 4.15 gives everybody a chance to go ahead and run through their errands and do what they need to do. Yeah, so what was the whole purpose of you guys creating the election day camp? This is such a cool thing, especially for those parents who can't find a babysitter. Right. They can bring them on here and then go and cast their votes. So actually, what kind of brought us into it was uh, in this year has been really difficult for even HISD. So a lot of their plans are kind of coming out uh, just two weeks in advance. So 
Parents finally found out that there was no school and it was time to go ahead and vote. So we figured everybody needs that help. We want to fill that niche inside of our community, and that's what we, uh, we, we aim to do today. Yeah, and there's a incredible trainers here, too. If you guys can take a look, the kids are getting that lesson in. They're going to start doing some more things here with those gymnastic skills. They're yeah. going to be bringing that out, so they have incredible teachers here to show them what's going on. But my teacher here, I saw him come in with that handstand. So, Courtney, I'm going to try and get the handstand, too. So you said you have you to do what first? All right, so remember, you're going to go ahead and do uh, you put one foot in front. I think earlier okay. we started with our left foot. All right. Arms up straight by our ears. You're going to stay straight from your wrists all the way to that back foot. And as your hands come down, bring that foot up. You ready? All right. Here we go. All right. One, <laughs> two, three. You've got it. Oh! Woo! <laughs> I think I got it a little bit. That was right? good. We that got was it in just a bit. We're going to be working on some more things and trying to get on that balancing beam in just a bit, too. But for right now, we're going to send things back to you in the studio, Courtney. All, All right. right. Good I job, Joe. <laughs> we'll see you in just a little bit. <laughs> Coming up next, is the election stressing you out? It's a thing. We got tips to help you handle all of this anxiety. Plus, if you have any questions about voting today, you can call the KPRC2 phone bank. We're going to check in with Lauren Kelly and the League of Women Voters of Houston to get some election day answers before you head to the polls. That's still ahead when we return. Well, welcome back. You know, election stress, it's a real thing. And if you've been feeling anxious or overwhelmed, our next guest is sharing tips to help us all cope. Joining me now is UT physician psychiatrist, Dr. Bobby Nix. Welcome to the show. Hi, welcome. Uh, well, let's just first talk about this election stress. It is a real thing. Yeah, so uh, election stress is basically the tension and anxiety that surrounds the upcoming election and the outcome of that election. We've all been through a lot with the pandemic recently and everything else that's been going on. So emotions and tensions are really heightened and it just gets compounded by all of this uh, discussion regarding the election. Absolutely, and you know, opposing views, and you're already highly stressed anyway, and maybe anxious given all those other things that we've all been dealing with. And many people have reported to be at odds with friends and family members over political views. So what can we do to really lessen the election stress? So one of the biggest things is uh, consumption of news and social media. I know that's an awkward thing to show, say on this show right now, uh, but it's good to limit the amount of news and media that you're consuming. Uh, limit it to 30 to 60 minutes a day or set a specific period of time that you're only gonna watch the news from five to six. Uh, Overconsumption uh, can just really add a lot to that stress. People read a lot of the, uh, the news and what's coming up and it just uh, escalates. It spirals out of control. So you have to place a limit on that for yourself. And I think it's also really important when you mention social media, a lot of people say they go down the rabbit hole on some of these comments, right? And you say avoid the comment sections on political posts or even news articles because I think that's really strong advice because it just kind of gets you amped up anyway. Um, okay, when this is all said and done, we don't know if that's going to be the case tonight or tomorrow, but what do we do once Election Day is over? So, yeah, you said that Election Day... Um, is going to be over at the end of uh, you know midnight, but it doesn't mean that this election is going to be over. It could be several more weeks before we find out who our new president is, and there's going to be a lot of stress uh, around that for a lot of people, and this could just lead to further heightening of uh, you know the general environment. One of the biggest things to do is continue to limit your news consumption and take a break. Uh, be sure to take some time for yourself. And if there is an issue that's uh, specifically very important to you, reach out to your senator, reach out to your congressman, make a phone call. Um, you can even volunteer for certain organizations related to that topic. Um, just go out there and do something good with your time. Be productive. Absolutely. That is great advice as well. And I feel like, too, what's really important is the way that we're feeling today may not necessarily be that amped up in a week, a month, or a year from now. That's correct. It's great to manage that stress, too. Okay, so we are also about to begin the holiday season, right? Thanksgiving's upon us. We have Christmas. Of course, we're all celebrating differently. But how do we get through the holidays peacefully? Because we know politics is one of those that really can amp up everyone. Uh, so the simplest uh, answer to that question is don't discuss politics. 
Um, that's the easiest uh, solution. Um, it can be a very contentious issue for a lot of people. You're gonna know best about your family um, and your friends and who you can and cannot talk to about politics. Uh, if you have to talk about it, uh, set some guidelines, uh, set some boundaries that there's gonna be no interrupting. Uh, you can only talk about it for a few minutes. Stick to broad general issues. Uh, try not to focus on very specific topics. Um, and if it starts to get heated or escalate, end it both of you just know when you have to walk away so you can remain friends and not not make a, a bad situation that's great advice and again breathing is always really good too exhaling inhaling kind of taking that moment dr bobby nick psychiatrist with ut physicians we appreciate your time today on how to manage election day stress thank you and if you would like more information or to schedule a consultation, you can visit utphysicians.com or simply call 888-488-3627. And still ahead, we're getting in that holiday spirit with our spin to win. It's the Nutcracker Market giveaway. Super fun. Find out who today's winner is when we come back. Plus, we're going to check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank ahead of Channel 2 News at 4. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back. You know, the Nutcracker Market, it's going virtual this year. The online marketplace starts November 12th. And to help kick it off, we are giving away great prizes all week. We started this yesterday, and you can be a winner. And all we have to do is spinning. And we have our winner, Brooke. Are, can you hear me? Yes. Brooke Hinden, how are you, girlfriend? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm great. So you get, you're our winner today. You get to spin the wheel. And I understand that you are a nutcracker junkie. How long have you been going? Who do you normally go with? Oh, I usually go, it's probably been, I used to go five years at least. And we just have a group of girlfriends that usually we go and then we'll usually go out to eat afterwards. We kind of make it a day. Absolutely. Okay, you ready? I'm going to spin the wheel and then we're going to see what kind of prize we end up with. Are you good? I'm ready. All right, let's spin it. We're gonna stop here and let me grab the envelope. We have uh, from Nutcracker and not your usual tree skirt. Ta-da! It's coming in, here we go. Hang on, I'll be able to show you in just a second. Here it is, our Nutcracker and this, uh, this tree skirt here. So that's what you've won today. So how fun is that? I have a collection of nutcrackers that my mom and I both get every year when we go. Nice. Congratulations. The producers will be in touch with you on uh, how we're going to get that to you, okay? All right. Thank you so much. This was fun. Absolutely. Thanks for watching and have a great holiday season. All right. Thank you. You too. Well, you can win some great holiday prizes too. All you have to do is head to clicktohouston.com for your chance to enter to win. And then make sure you tune in right here at Houston Life at 3 p.m. to see if you're our next winner on our wheel. And by the way, the Houston Ballet now has season tickets on sale, so make sure to check them out at houstonballet.org. All right, let's now check in with Keith and Christine and Frank for a look at what's coming up at 4 p.m. I know you guys have a jam-packed show for sure. Oh, my gosh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, we little, certainly do, yes. Yeah, a little jealous of uh, those, those trinkets you're handing out there. But, no, uh, good stuff, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, you know, of course, all eyes on Election Day today, but, uh, you know, if you have not voted yet, there's no way you could use the weather as an excuse <laughs> to get out there. Frank, my gosh, it's another beautiful. just fantabulous day. I mean, it is. It's better today than it was yesterday. Look yeah. how clear and blue out outside temperatures are perfect right there in the mid and upper 70s, 76 to 78 degrees in the humidity is actually lower today than it was yesterday. 18% in Cleveland, 25% in Houston, 21 in Katy, 21 in Conroe. It's nice and dry. We have a lot of dry air off to our east, and so with this east wind, we're getting that dry air moving in here. So it's absolutely stellar. If you're gonna go vote, great weather. If you're gonna just relax and maybe you've been a little stressed, it's also great weather for that. Take a walk, a little run, a little biking right there in the 70s, 69 at six, 64 at seven. So then if you are headed to an election watch party or having one yourself, in your own wine bar, 64 at 7, 62 at 8, 58 at 10, and 57 at 11. So perfect really for everything except the tropics. Let me tell you, Ada is moving into Nicaragua, and about the only town along the coast here is where this system is moving into. There's a little town there, uh, Puerto Cabezas, about 50,000 population, and it is moving right into that area with 140 mile an hour winds, a 14 to 21 foot storm surge, two to three feet of rain. This is going to be torrential in 
Nicaragua and Honduras. We'll talk more about it coming up. In fact, a lot to talk about. A warmer week ahead, a superb weekend. All the way into next week, we'll take you and tracking Ada and where it goes from there. That's straight ahead. Christine? All right, very good, Frank. Thank you. Also coming up at 4 o'clock today, we're just under three and a half hours left until the polls close this evening. Our team of reporters covering all the big races and all the angles. So far, voting has been relatively smooth. That's good news. We're going to be checking back in to see if things stay that way as the day winds down. Also, making sure every vote is counted and on time. A federal judge's decision about U.S. post offices across the country, including here in Houston, what inspectors have been ordered to do. Plus, quashing rumors and misinformation, our trust index team is monitoring election day. We're going to be checking in to see what they've spotted so far. So certainly a lot coming up, uh, Courtney, coming up on uh, the news at 4 o'clock. Absolutely, and that weather is amazing. We'll see you guys in less than 30 minutes. Sounds good. Okay. Well, earlier we asked you all to share how are you with spending election day, and here's what some of the viewers had to say. Nikki writes in at home because it's Taco Tuesday, y'all. Okay, I'm with Nikki on that one. And Lisa writes in Manny Petty and praying and relaxing. Now that sounds like a good plan. Amanda says working, wishing I was drinking. <laughs> so Derek sounds like uh, she needs that shaker that you have. Okay, if you haven't already, be sure to make sure that you share your plans with us today on our social media platforms. Let's check back in with Derek, who is uh, standing by with a fun trivia game. This is all based on Election Day, is that right? It is based on Election Day, Courtney. And here's the thing. I have some time on my hands mm -hmm. at home, so I've been reading up on the Election Day. Our kind producers have built some graphics uh, for us. So I'm going to have them put the first one up on the screen, and we're going to sort of go through a little Election Day trivia and, uh, you know, brush up on your skills. And Courtney, just FYI, I didn't know a lot of these answers oh, until gosh. now. So okay. go for it. This is the question. Who is the youngest man to become president? And we have a list to help you all out. Is oh, it John okay. Kennedy? Okay. Uh -huh. Theodore Roosevelt. Okay. Barack Obama. Okay. Or is it Ronald Reagan? Kennedy. You know, that's what I thought too. It's sort of a trick question. So Kennedy was the youngest person at 43 to be elected oh. president, but Teddy Roosevelt was the youngest to assume the presidency. He was 42 when he became president after William McKinley was assassinated. Oh, yeah, trick question indeed. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next slide and we'll get to that next question. And again, I didn't know a lot of these. A lot of these are a little bit tricky. Who is the oldest president to hold office. And remember, it's not to be elected to office, it's to actually hold the office. Is it George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Woodrow Wilson, Ronald Reagan? Reagan? There you go. Ding, ding, ding. Reagan oh. was 77 years old when he finally left the office. Okay. So, and Trump, I believe, was the oldest president uh, to be elected at the age of 70 years old. Okay. okay, red state and blue state. Where did that actually come from? This is something I had never pondered until now. Let's put the choices up on your screen. I know I'm on a slight delay, so we can go ahead and reveal those. The need to color code electoral college maps. Was that the reason? Hundreds of years ago, each party chose a color. Each state is just assigned a color or the colors are based on population. I'm going with the first one. Okay, do you have a reason for that? No, just because it okay. sounds good. <laughs> so you, you are exactly right. So there was a need to color code the maps. Yeah, and this is when presidential races became televised. So at home, it was easier for viewers to decipher uh, how, how, the, how they voted. You know, yeah, okay, right. How everything fantastic. Was being tallied out. Very interesting. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. This is a true or false question, Courtney. Votes have always been cast by ballot. I, yes, true. Mm. False. Sure about that? No, so in the early days, votes were not cast by a secret ballot. You actually just sort of got together and raised your hands or you just sort of shouted out uh, your choice. By the mid 1800s, some states were using paper ballots. Okay. And then the party leaders were responsible for bringing those ballots to the polls. Um, but Massachusetts was the first state to pass a law requiring ballots to be secret. That was in 1888. Wow. And then within a few years, it spread across the United States by 1891. It was happening nationwide. Are you hearing this election music we're playing, this theme music? It's very, like, symphonic. 
It's lovely. I am hearing it. I'm I having was just a trying moment. to block it out. I'm just, I'm it's kidding. just so beautiful. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. <laughs> okay. And this is a pretty good one, okay? I believe it has to do with a voting age. When was the legal voting age lowered to 18? We're going to put the choices up on your screen. Is it 1943, 1965, 1971, or 1989? Oh, I don't know. Seventy-one, sixty-five. You know what? You you 71? are absolutely correct. It was seventy-one. So so here's the thing. In 1943, Georgia actually was the first state to lower the voting age to eighteen, and there was this whole campaign. The slogan was essentially "Old enough to fight." old enough to vote. Yes. So we had all these people going off to war, all these young men fighting and women helping with the war. 18 years old, swept the nation, and when the 26th Amendment of the Constitution was ratified, it all happened in 1971, and that's what brought the federal voting age down to 18. I love this. I feel like I learned something today, and the theme music, I'm just quite moved. All of it is just very, you know, just got me all the feels but we're going to I was check kidding about the music. I love patriotic music. I do it too. added it added a nice touch. I dropped a tear. Um, we're going to see you in just a moment, okay? Don't go anywhere. Okay. I got to check back. We got to get a Brandon update. We got to know how he's feeling. Uh, and still to come on Houston Live, KPRC's Chris Gutierrez is joining us now to break down how we are helping you stay informed throughout tonight's races and Lauren Kelly is live at our Oh, there he is. Hi, Chris. Uh, Lauren Kelly is live at our phone bank at NRG Stadium. Hey, Lauren, uh, what do you have coming up for us? So coming up, you guys, if you've still got questions about Election Day or anything voting related, this is the phone bank that you need to call. We're here at NRG all afternoon. The phone lines will be open. They'll remain open until the polls close at 7 o'clock tonight. I know there's some basic questions that you have before you head to the polls. We'll get them answered coming up next in just two minutes. we come back with more Houston Life. We'll be right back. Well, you guys, it is election day, and if you have last minute day of questions, we are prepared to help you answer them. It's the KPRC2 phone bank here at NRG, and we have teamed up with some very special ladies and volunteers with the League of Women Voters of Houston to help answer some of these questions. And you've probably seen her on TV all day long. She is the phone bank coordinator. Rita Hicks is here to help us get some of those answers. Thank you for joining us today. We're so happy to be here. So happy to be helping voters. So first of all, when I walked in, we kind of made the comment it's been a little quieter because so many people have voted early this year. That's right, and we do we do this every year, and we have lulls um, during the day when people are at work, but as soon as people are leaving work, they're thinking, oh, I gotta vote on the way home, and we'll start getting busier again. Absolutely. What I wanna mention really quickly are the two phone numbers. They have one in English and one in Spanish. The English phone number is 713-778-8920, and in Spanish, you can dial 713-778-8930, which is so wonderful to help in in both languages. That's right. Um, and and both, both the lines have been busy all day long. So Absolutely. Okay. So uh, I want you, Rita, to tell everybody about the two main things that people have been asking the most about today. We are getting the typical, am I registered? Where do I go vote? What ID, ID do I need questions? But the two new ones this year are just because of the confusion that's been going on. We've gotten a lot of calls about people who did drive through voting and are worried about their votes. But the ruling we got overnight tells us that those votes are all okay and there's nothing more for those voters to do. The other question we've got is about people who have mail-in ballots but haven't mailed mailed them yet. Don't mail them today, but there are two things you can do. One is to take your ballot to a mail drop-off and you can find those locations on harrisvotes.com. Um, the second one is if you take your mail-in ballot to the ballot uh, to the polling location, you can turn it in and vote in person. Oh, that's wonderful. And I also read that here you can come and vote in person and you can also turn in your mail-in ballot is exactly what you were just saying. Exactly. At NRG, you can do either of those two things. That's so convenient. Plenty of parking and lots of help to get around the facility. Thank you so much, Rita, for all the information. If you guys need a little bit more info, it is all on our website. Just jump on over to click2houston.com for more info and get out there and vote, you guys. Courtney, back to you. Great information for Election Day. Thanks so much, Lauren. We know the phone bank is just one of the many ways which we are helping you stay informed throughout the day. Joining us now is KPRC's Chris Gutierrez with a breakdown on what to expect. Good to see you Thanks in studio. To the set. I mean, you're not busy or anything no, today. not at all. And I, what I love about this casual couch and the whole setup, and yeah. can, we, can we just move this over to Studio A? I mean, you, you know, think? it's all about a conversation, On election right? night, we're, all, we're just talking. Exactly. You know, all we're doing is talking. Do you miss covering elections? You know, a little bit, because yeah. it's 
such a powerful and exciting time. Absolutely. Uh, things are changing rapidly, and that's right. what I love about it. Let's break it down for the viewer you because coverage uh, today on KPRC, of course, we have to talk about expanded coverage for We're everybody. We're doing a lot. Yeah. I mean, the phone bank is, is a huge opportunity for people out there who have questions, right? As Courtney pointed out, you know, you, you've got it in English, you have it in Spanish, and you can call up until 7 o'clock when the polls close. But here, here inside our studios, we're going to have our hour-long newscast from 4 to 5, and then Lauren and I will, will pick up our coverage at 5 to 5.30. Lester Holt will have everything from the decision desk there in New York from 5.30 to 6, and then at 6 o'clock until our, our 10 o'clock broadcast, the network will really take over. So you'll see our 6 o'clock broadcast tonight online at clicktohouston.com. But then after that, you'll be able to check in with us every half hour uh, on our main channel two across the, the broadcast world. So we, we do want to make sure that we keep you informed on the local races. But then again, you know, we could be bumped, if you will, depending on what, what the bigger races look like across the country. So, I mean, we've got you covered. Uh, Bottom line is we've got you covered. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I will NBC is really extending their um, nighttime coverage. It's going to continue through the wee hours in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I that's exactly right. Because, again, there's so much uncertainty. Right. Right? I mean, so many people across the country voted early. And so the question becomes, what are the polling locations going to look like at 7 o'clock when they close here locally? We'll just have to wait and see. And then, of course, the, the different time zones and all of that. Okay, right. another big one we have to talk about is the webcast here on KPRC. And, of course, the host is Cambrell. Yep. Um, and this is this is something that's major going on well, here, Well, here's the thing. You, you guys realize this every day. When you do your broadcast, people are always connecting with you via social media. Yes. Right? I mean, you just read some 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 comments and things like that. So so many of us, when we're when we're watching the news, when we're watching TV, we always have our phone with us. And so this is an opportunity for us to to really meet those viewers, and they can log on to our website and they can watch. We have analysts. Let me look at my notes here. Yeah. Uh, Paul Simpson, former Harris County Republican Chair, is going to join Cambrell as well with the uh, Carol Robinson, the former uh, Houston City Council Member Professor at TSU. He'll be there to represent the Democratic side. Uh, Judge Ed Emmett. It's going to zoom in. So, I mean, you, you've got a host of people. Our legal analyst, Brian Weiss, is available. And if there's an opportunity for him to kind of give legal, legal perspective on something. So, uh, again, we've got you covered. There's a lot going on tonight. It's a fun night to be a news anchor. Uh, and so we just want to make sure that we're meeting people wherever they are. Absolutely. It's a fun night to be a viewer because there's so many, besides the presidential election, there's mm -hmm. so many local races mm -hmm. that we are watching as well. So we have right. about 30 seconds left. I, I definitely want to talk about the trust index because I think a yep. lot of people are talking about this yep. one. What is it and how are you guys so, working this out? So the great thing behind the Trust Index is the Fathom team is an international team. They're really the think tank behind this. And they're using complex searches to really look into and verify information, right? You may share something on social media that you think is legit, right? Mm -hmm. And so what this Fathom team does is they're behind the scenes fact checking what's trending across the country, what's trending locally. So if you guys see something, we want to know about it. You can reach out to us here at KPRC Channel 2 because that's, I mean, again, you, you may share something. Thing, but it may be misinformation. Right. You may share it not realizing that it's that it's wrong, or you may be sharing disinformation. That means you're sharing something deliberately to try and sway a vote or change someone's mind. Uh, so again, we're going to stay on top of all these things tonight. Well, we can't wait to see you in the thick of it, in the in the chair that you and Dominique love to sit in, yep. and uh, I know you're going to have fun tonight. We got you covered. Great to see you, Chris. You and too. remember, election coverage starts right after Houston Life with the news at four. And coming up, Derek is back with some at-home ideas is to keep you busy if you're stuck at home hey but first we're going to check in with joe who is hanging out with the kiddos at the little gym's election day camp to Houston Life. We are at the Little Gym of Houston, Bel Air. They're having their election day camp here. The kiddos have been burning off some energy. Parents were able to drop those kids off so that they were able to get out and go and vote. And now the kids have somewhere fun to come and enjoy too. And speaking of fun, Alex, you have to show me something on here too because you're talking about more activities. You have to give us an example of what this sure. is and I'm going to do it after you, right? Okay, sure. We can do it and start off that way. All you right, got, let's do you. that. Let's show us what we have here. Tell us what this is first right. and then what so, we're going to be doing. Actually, over here we've got these um, uneven bars and we can actually move them around to suit our needs depending on whether we've got boys or girls events. The first thing that I want you to try today 
is a front support into a very simple uh, forward roll. So All right, so roll. give us an example of that. Jump up to a front support, hold yourself up, fold in half, and we'll let you crash down easy today. There we go. And finish and salute. So these right. are some, some activities that the kids are doing out here. Then what are some other activities too? So for right now, a lot of folks <laughs> think that, go ahead and kiss those knees. All the way around. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, so a lot of the things that we try to do here at the gym are not just games and activities. We mm -hmm. definitely try to strive. Uh, we strive to incorporate real gymnastics since that is basically our forte. And another great uh, event or apparatus that we use are the still rings. All right. So show us that really so quickly. So even if we're not going to be practicing, uh, for example, girls don't ever compete on the rings, but it's a great exercise for different uh, core uh, exercises. So we'll go ahead and try to start off, for example, with the with a quick hold. This is called an L hold. And you'll be able to go ahead and try it out all on your own, all right? Okay, so let's try and do that there, too. Now, for people who are actually interested in doing anything here, not just for Election Day camp, right. where can they find out more information? So they can always, you know, one of the easiest ways to go about, look at that, nice oh, tight. Okay, so <laughs> let's try and go up. Oh, there we go. Point Woo! those toes for a pencil hang. Kiss your knees, bring them to your face. Oh. Or come right back down. That works. Oh, no, you got it, you got it, you got it. Oh. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah, so, so the camp ends at 4.15 today. Yes, it does. How can you find out more information? So you guys can always visit, uh, you guys can Google The Little Gym of Bel Air or visit www.thelittlegym.com slash Houston Bel Air TX. thanks so much for all of that. We're going to have more of the activities that they do here at The Little Gym on our website. You can go and follow us there, too. For right now, we're going to send things back to you guys in the studio, and I'm going to try and hang out some more, right? Let's try it, man. You've got there you go. Stuff. Good core strength. Yeah, Joe, legs, thanks so much. Core. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, if you're looking for a way to pass the time this evening, why not tackle a messy closet or drawer, right? It's kind of busy energy. Derek is back with an easy solution. Okay, what do we have here? I don't hear you. Are you, you know, sometimes bad mute buttons happen to good, good people, people, Courtney. See? So listen, first of all, <laughs> I don't know uh, why I decided to take video of my very messy closet, but I'm going to show you a video of the closet and tell you what I did. First of all, you got to get rid of a few things, but right. if you have trouble sorting things like t-shirts okay look for a long time i used to just pile up the t-shirts and then a bunch of stray things okay right and in drawers i would just sort of throw things in well check this out using the konmari method check out those t-shirts very good i like the snowbird shirt there too um oh, you did thanks. a great job well thank you okay so so take note of the way these t-shirts are folded see that you can see every t-shirt if it's you like take a filing one out system, right? then and you decide you don't want it, you just put it back in, right? Instead of like ruining a whole stack. So Courtney, you know Marie Kondo, she wrote the book, um, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Yes. Okay, and we love this book, right? So I'm gonna show you how I folded my t-shirts so that I can see them standing up. And whether you put them in a drawer or on a shelf, this works both ways, okay? So I have the t-shirt that I'm wearing today. You start by folding the t-shirt the long way in thirds okay okay fold it in thirds then you just go ahead and fold it in half like a little sandwich and then you do in thirds again so thirds first then in half then in thirds and look at that it stands it's a magic t-shirt thank you marie kondo so that is the secret there in thirds then in half then in thirds again it stands up and you can put it in a drawer courtney i think you have a t-shirt you're going to try it yourself i do and you remember my benetton years so i'm not like a gap worker where i need a folding board you know Scab Ooh, workers, they cheat. There. They cheat. <laughs> that was, that was okay little, i don't remember so i did that and then do i take the bottom yeah either way bottom or top oh wait fold it in half wait fold it in half Oh, they keep talking to me and I can't hear what you're saying to me. Um, I think I have half. to go. So all grab the way the in half. There, there we go. go. Now do it in thirds. There we go. Well, well, okay. That not was, really. That They're telling me I got to wrap and oh, I can't hear a word good. you're saying. Okay. Well, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Houston Life. Well, today was a fun show. Derek, we, I miss you in person. How is Brandon doing?
Oh, I miss you too. Thank you for asking. He's doing well. I don't think his condition is getting really any worse. We're monitoring his vitals every day, so he has good oxygen levels in his blood. He still can't smell or taste anything, which is frustrating. He he was eating. He he, he made this incredible gumbo before the weekend, and you know he's a Louisiana boy. He yes. loves his gumbo. And sadly, he was like, "Oh, I can't taste it. It's like eating play doh." So mm. he's fine, and he's gonna get through it. And uh, it's been so great that you guys. Have have been interested to check in well and how are you feeling you're you're feeling feel good. good okay how do i feel <laughs> i feel great just call me prepared you are the man i miss you i love the giant shaker i know you're going to have fun tonight uh watching the election results we're going to do this all over again tomorrow have a great night derek Sounds good, but what giant shaker? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, we got to send it over to Chris Christine, Keith, and Frank for the news at four.